when to automate and when not. I bet many of you have already been in that situation where you will ask yourself exactly that question like when to automate and when not and is there something that I should keep in mind when asking me that question. So before we dive into the video, as always, leave a like, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you like to support me and also share the video with your network. Hey, sorry for the little break of the main video. You all know that I like to share knowledge with the world. Lately, I found a great source of tech knowledge here on YouTube. The channel is called Tech in 5 Minutes and is powered by Jelvix. They share insights and trends on programming, testing, AI and more. After watching my video, I recommend checking out the list of top automation testing tools they recommend. The link to the video and the channel is in the description box down below. Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. It's me Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today to my latest video and I think it will be a really interesting topic for you, right? So let's get started. When to automate and when not. So true story, believe it or not, there are companies out there without a single line of automated tests. Yes, that's exactly the right reaction, right? So how is this even possible? And this video should give you some guidance and answer some questions and hopefully help you to decide when to automate and when not. So let's go and check it out. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. So what are the benefits of test automation? Of course, efficiency and speed. Automated tests can run faster and more frequently, saving time and if done right, our effort, reducing the effort for you, for your team, for the company, for the product that you are developing. So that's really cool. But the, the main important thing here, if done right, if it's done wrong, you will lose time, you have a lot of maintenance work to do and so forth and so forth. So keep that in mind. Another benefit is accuracy and repeatability. Sorry, a hard word for me today. So automated tests produce consistent results if done right. They reduce the risk of a human error. So especially if you, I mean, we all have the ter heard the term regression testing. Uh, if you have to repeat and test every time a login, a sign up process, whatever, Automation can help you to speed up things, to focus on the more challenging topic when it comes to software testing. Coverage and scalability. Yes, automation allows for extensive test coverage, easy scal scalability for larger projects. So if you have a, like, let's say a couple of hundreds of thousands of unit tests, you get a good coverage of the current state of your code base. Even though this number that is coming out of it might not be like a good indicator if it's good or bad, I mean, what does mean 80% code coverage mean if the unit tests are written in the wrong way? Maybe 50% are even better. That depends on your context. But the, the most important benefit I see on test automation is scalability. You can run the tests in parallel on different configuration, different systems, and to speed up things and to get much more results and insights of the current state of your product. And last but not least, cost reduction. Again. If done right and correct, it can save you money in the long run. Yeah. So if you take a look at the, the tool vendor market, also in my videos that I made where I'm going to show you different kinds of products that you can get for your product development phases and then testing phases. In the beginning, they might cost some money or even more money. But in the long run, if you really integrate the tools well, you gain benefits from it and you will reduce the costs in the end. Yeah, so these are the benefits, the four benefits I see on test automation. Let me know in the comments below which benefits you see on test automation. So what are limitations of test automation? Complex test scenarios is a limit. So certain scenarios such as testing, user behavior and complex workflows may require manual testing and are not the best thing for an automation flow. I mean, imagine 
you have a really complex system and maybe you have to switch between systems. Imagine you have a web end, a web front end, and then you have to go to a console at the same time to do something in order to do some testing. And these switching of systems may add a lot of complexity to your test automation workflows and scenarios. There are tools out there who can cope without the, the context and can leave context of systems, but even though that's really complex scenarios for you to set up and also to maintain. Yeah? User interface and experience is, are also limitations of automation. So automation may not capture the subjective aspects of user experience and interface evaluation. It's always an example that I bring also my teaching classes on software testing is that you, the things that you're telling the machine, the automation scripts, the machine is doing that. But in case the, your, your web application, for example, or your mobile application is completely in the wrong color if you have not done any visual checks and implementations or is showing wrong ads or bad ads that you don't want to have in your product, the script doesn't care, just following what you have told the system. Yeah? Maintenance and updates. So automation scripts may require frequent updates and the software evolves. So increasing maintenance efforts is also something you have to keep in mind. Our limitations. I have seen a lot of companies out there saying, hey, let's automate all the things. That's a good idea. Write the code once, leave it alone, and it's running. Yeah, We all know that's not the truth, right? So in case you have automation in place, you have to treat it the same way as production code to have benefits from it. Yeah. And last but not least, also cost and time investment is something that limitates or has limitations of test automation. So developing, maintaining automation frameworks can be costly and time consuming in the initial stages. Maybe even in long running stages, if you have uh, big licenses on maybe cloud providers and stuff like that, this costs money. But if you do the math and for your context, for your product, for your services, it might turn out to be more positive so you, this is something that really on an individual basis depends on the setup that you're working in. Factors to consider for test automation. Yeah. So in case you would like to start with test automation, you're asking the questions of what are factors to consider. Test case complexity. Yes, we had this in on the slide before. Don't start with complex situations to automate. Yeah. So assess the level of complexity and stability of the test cases to determine if you would like to automate or not, right? So if you know already that a system is not stable or it's like really complex, don't start with that one. You will fail, likely. The test frequency and stability is also important. So consider the frequency of execution of test cases and stability over time for automation selection. So if you see that you have stuff that you have to test over and over again, consider them for automation to reduce time and just use the time for other complex testing scenarios. Criticality and impact, also something that you should do. You could also use like risk storming, for example, to, uh, to identify risk and to also mitigate the risk in the long run. So to identify critical functionalities in your application, in your product, see what are potential impacts in case this system is not working anymore, and then prioritize those sections for your automation as well. This will help you a lot. It narrows down the focus on automation. And last but not least, also, your skill set or your team skill set depends is a, is a really important factor to consider when you would like to start with automation. So check the available skill set in yourself, what if you are the responsible person or within your team. So is everyone able to write automation? Is everyone able to understand automation? This is important to, to clarify up front because if only one person is able of writing the tests, it's likely to fail. Come on, it's if this person is on vacation, leaving company and stuff like that, nobody will take over and project test automation closed. So that's why keep that in mind as well. And last but not least, the tech stack. So is your tech stack known to all of you? Is it stable enough to use to be used for automation? Or do you have a dedicated test environment? What's with test data? All those questions around the technical um, depth that you have in your project is important to consider upfront for test automation. And then also use the plain old test pyramid to decide like on which layer of your tech stack you would like to automate and which frameworks you would like to use and what are the skills that you need to have in order to automate over there. Yeah, so that's important. So now we come to the question when to start with automation. So if the product is stable enough. Yeah. So only really only start with automation 
if you think or if you know that the product is mature enough. Yeah. So when the product parts are stable, if you know already that the feature that you would like to automate will change in next week on two or on three weeks, don't do it. Spend more time in exploratory testing that section and do something else in terms of automation because you will change it. Of course, if in those three weeks, for example, the product is doing some really critical for you and you can do some, some quick ones with automation, go for it. But it really depends on your context, on your product. But I ask you the question, when to start repetitive and time consuming testing? Yes, when there are parts of your product that you always have to test. I meant it before, it's like sign up process, login process, checkout flows. I don't know, whatever you have in your system, do test automation. You will you reduce your time, your manual testing time a lot, and you can use that time for other things to do. Yeah, so really go and check those sections out. Code refactorings. Yes, when you when the code base is legacy, you know, I bet you all have been there. Developers talking about legacy, we have legacy code. And yeah, if the developers would like to refactor something or to write something from scratch again, have automation scripts in place that tell them or the team that that's the functionality that we expect from it. And then they can code against those tests. TDD is the keyword here. Yeah, so this is important. Automation can help here to not break any things that were working before. And last but not least, also if you like to have special requirements in terms of different browser, hardware combinations, software combinations, devices, and you would like to speed up things, you can use parallel text, test execution for that. And that's also when you think you should think about test automation because then, I mean, imagine you have to test on all the latest browsers like Chrome, Edge, Safari, and Firefox, all the features at the same time in four or five browsers. Come on, this is not possible. Speed up the things with test automation and then you can do something else parallel. So these are the four things to consider when starting automation. I bet there are more. Let me know in the comments what do you think and also rethink yourself when you ask yourself the question when to start with automation. And even there's another one, I forgot about it, non-functional requirements of course if you would like to do load testing performance testing or security pen testing this is something you should clearly automate i mean i think it's even not possible to automate something with with a load testing and performance testing so you have to write scripts in order to test the product in terms of these non-functional requirements okay now when not to start with automation yes so if you are working in an environment or in a current project company, when you have one time or short term projects, you know already that's a landing page, an event landing page that will go away in four weeks, in three months, I don't know, don't automate it. Yeah, Don't spend too much time on products that have a really short life cycle. Or if you already know that the, the end of the product life cycle is coming soon, then I would rather recommend you to go do exploratory testing crowd testing, test sessions within your team, your company, and don't waste too much time with automation. If you don't have the skills, yes, lack of skills, it's so important to not start with automation. I've seen so many people failing with automation because they were not able to write clean code, they had no programming skills, and what they was just trying around with things like copy paste from here and there, and it's not working. I mean, if you don't have the programming skills, don't start with them. Yeah, don't start without the programming skills. It doesn't make sense. Get first the basics, learn about programming, learn about the tools, what are good patterns, what are good things to consider and to do, and then start with the automation. And if you have this lack of skills, do some trainings, attend conferences, pair with developers. So there's so many things that you can do in order to ramp up your skills. If you have a limited budget, yeah, so automation is time consuming and it comes with a budget in terms of licenses. So if you decide to go with a with a paid product, this costs money. If you decide to go with an open source framework, it's for free, but you have still to invest the time in getting into the tool, which is the same for the paid one, and then, you know, work on it. And if you have no budget or just a small budget, rethink the the way or the way you would like to work and if you would like to use automation for that one, yeah? Just to have automation Yes, that's also not a good idea when to start with automation. Yeah, I mean, also, we have all heard the movement and seen it like, hey, let's automate all the things, then the world is coming, becoming a better place. Yeah, <laughs> no. 
So never start with writing automation just for the sake of having them. Yeah, I mean, I've seen projects where they had hundreds of UI tests going complete full stack from, from the user end, uh, perspective to the back end. And they were so time consuming, running for hours and they had no benefit and value. So don't do it. Yeah, get, get knowledge about your architecture, see what you would like to automate, what not, and then start simple and easy and take it from there. Yeah, so that's, that's important. And if automation is a side project, then you should also not start. Yeah, so never treat automation like a side project. Hey, there's an intern, he or she can do it. No, it's not going to work out. Someone has, or someone in best case, the whole team should be, or should feel responsible for the automation. And if, if that's treated some, some as a side gig, this is going to, not going to work out. You will have maybe short time or short term successes and short time value, but in the long run, you will not succeed with it. Yeah. So then just don't start with automation. Do something else in between. Use the money for crowd testing, exploratory testing, get a second tester in your team, for example, do more manual testing. And then you, I think you will have more benefits from it. So these are the factors not to start automation. And that's it already. So let's summarize what was in this video today. And I hope you already enjoyed it so far. So always think before you start. Important, right? This is not con considered and not connected to automation. It's always the case. Use your brain and then start working. Talk to your colleagues, especially to product and also to developers to learn all about the tech stack, the product roadmap. What are the plans? Maybe not only the product roadmap, but also the, the company roadmap. Like what has the company in mind in the next, I don't know, quarter, half a year and so forth. Yeah. Then evaluate the product in the tech stack. Just mention that one. Make a plan. That's important. Think, talk, make a plan. And then start simple. Only if you start simple, you can get really quick and good benefits from it and quick ones. And then you are happy. You gain something and then from the momentum you can take the whole team, establish a whole team mindset to work uh, on the automation together and then I bet it will be a success. Thanks for watching my video and coming by today. If you want to learn more about new tech like machine learning, AI programming, languages and more, check the YouTube channel for my friends from Jelwix, Tech in 5 Minutes. Also make sure to watch their list of top automation testing tools. Follow the links down below in the video description. So, and with that, we are almost 15 or 16 minutes already in the video. Let me know your thoughts. Like, what do you think about the stuff that I was just talking about? Do you think it's correct? Is it wrong? To totally nothing correct what I just said? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback on that side. And again, as always, like it, subscribe it, and share it. I wish you a great day. Have a good one. Bye-bye, and see you soon.